Modern engineering insists that moisture is something to block completely. We wrap wood in membranes, seal it in coatings, and trap it beneath layers of synthetic protection. The Vikings took a very different approach, and, well, the results speak for themselves. Viking ships crossed the North Atlantic, sat in icy harbours, and endured decades of salt spray without dissolving into rot. Some of that same wood survives today. The secret wasn't a miracle substance or lost chemical formula. It was a moisture barrier based on balance, not isolation, and it remains more effective than many modern solutions. Vikings understood that moisture itself was not the enemy. Viking builders knew wood would always encounter water. Boats lived in it. Houses faced snow, rain, and coastal fog. Instead of trying to make wood completely waterproof, they focused on controlling how water moved through it. Their moisture barrier allowed wood to absorb small amounts of moisture without holding it long enough to rot. This is where modern building often fails. Trapped moisture destroys wood faster than exposure ever could. The barrier relied on pine tar working deep inside the wood. The foundation of the Viking moisture barrier was pine tar, but not as a surface coating. Pine tar was applied warm, repeatedly, and allowed to soak into seasoned timber. Heat expanded the wood's pores, drawing tar inward rather than leaving it on the surface. Once cooled, the tar remained flexible inside the fibres. It repelled liquid water while still allowing vapour to escape. This created a one-way moisture system that modern membranes struggle to replicate. Why pine tar behaves differently from modern sealants? Modern sealants harden into brittle shells. As wood expands and contracts, cracks form and water enters, then becomes trapped. Pine tar moves with the wood. It never fully hardens, even in cold climates. This flexibility allowed Viking planks to bend in heavy seas without splitting or leaking. The moisture barrier did not fail because it did not resist movement. It adapted to it. You know, seasoning made the barrier permanent rather than just temporary. The Vikings, interestingly, never applied tar to green wood. Timber was seasoned slowly, sometimes for years, allowing excess moisture and sugars to leave naturally. This process made the wood stable before preservation ever began. When tar was finally applied, it locked in that stability rather than, well, trapping decay. Nowadays, modern builders often reverse this process, sealing wood too early, and unfortunately creating internal conditions just perfect for rot. Structural design reinforced the moisture barrier, and the Vikings didn't rely on materials alone. Ships were built with overlapping planks that shed water naturally. Homes were raised, ventilated, and roofed with steep pitches that moved rain quickly away from timber. Joints were carefully shaped to avoid water traps. This design approach worked hand-in-hand hand with tar treatment, creating a system rather than, you know, just a single solution. Archaeological evidence really does confirm its effectiveness. The Oseberg and Gokstad ships, for example, demonstrate this moisture barrier in action. Despite centuries in wet burial conditions, sections of tar-treated wood remain structurally sound. Microscopic analysis shows reduced fungal penetration compared to untreated samples. Even today, traditional boat builders restoring historic vessels rely on pine tar, because, quite frankly, modern coatings just fail under the same conditions. So, how can this Viking method be applied today? 
Well, this approach is entirely practical now. First, you want to start with properly dried wood. Then, warm the timber using sunlight or, you know, some indirect heat. Next, apply pine tar thinned slightly with natural oil for deeper penetration. It's important to allow it to soak in fully before applying additional coats over several days. Pay special attention to the end grain, joints, and, of course, areas exposed to water. For outdoor structures, it's best to repeat light applications every few years rather than sealing the wood permanently. So, let's talk about some uh, practical uses for builders and survivalists. Fence posts treated in this way, well, they resist rot without contaminating the soil. Wooden boats, you see, remain flexible and leak-resistant. Tool handles, they survive repeated wet-dry cycles without cracking. Off-grid cabins, in fact, benefit from a breathable protection that adapts to seasonal moisture changes. Now, this method does require a bit of maintenance, sure, but it's far less than those modern coatings that, you know, tend to fail suddenly. Why does modern science, hmm, struggle to improve on this method? Well, modern materials often aim for absolute control. The Viking moisture barrier, on the other hand, accepted that wood is alive and responsive. By allowing controlled interaction with moisture rather than total exclusion, it actually prevented decay more reliably. Science has created stronger chemicals, that's true, but not a better balance. What did the Vikings understand that still matters today? They knew that durability comes from harmony with materials, not domination. Their moisture barrier worked because it respected wood's nature. That very understanding, you know, allowed their ships to cross oceans and their buildings to endure for centuries. If this kind of deep historical knowledge matters to you, well, do subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this with fellow history enthusiasts, builders and survivalists who value methods that actually work. These techniques carried the Vikings across the world, and honestly, they're still worth knowing today.